<laughs> Aha! You thought it was going to be another iPhone 14 episode, didn't you? But no! Apple, for the first time officially, just confirmed that their AR VR headset is real. Only 25% of you have notifications turned on. So go ahead, fix that. Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back uh, to Front Page Tech. Uh, FPT. But, uh, uh, of course, show that gives you all the tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. So, uh, I was scrolling on Reddit today, chilling, you know, and stumbled on this post. I received refurbished AirPods Pro complete with the previous owner's earwax and blood. <laughs> That's it. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I figured if I had to see that, so do you. You're welcome. News. Alrighty, tidy. So, first up for the day, story numero uno. I see you, okay? I hear you. I read your comments. A lot of you are asking me to please talk about the Galaxy S22. So, okay. Let's talk about it. You know, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you've seen it. It has higher specs than any other phone on the market right now. And it got absolutely smashed by the iPhone 13 in benchmarks. PC Mag ran Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra against the iPhone 13 Pro Max in Geekbench 5. And as you can see, that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor is not quite what we had hoped. The Galaxy S22 Ultra scored a single core score of 1232, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max scored a 1735. And in multi-core, the S22 Ultra landed a 3433, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max hit 4647. Keep in mind, that iPhone 13 came out last year. So there's that. This just goes to show you that specs mean absolutely nothing. I feel like I have to remind you all the time that specs, these numbers on paper, they don't actually speak to the experience of any of these devices, ever. As you can see, in this case, the specs for the Galaxy S22 Ultra matter just as much as the media trying to cancel Joe Rogan. And when it came down to it, the phone with the highest specs ever got nerfed by a phone that came out last year. Regardless though, these numbers are so trivial and at the end of the day, all of these phones are great and we're just splitting pairs or whatever the saying is. So try not to get too caught up in which one has better numbers on like the nerdiest website ever. Just enjoy whatever phone you have and whatever makes you happy, whatever platform makes you happy. That's it. That said, right, uh, those scores on iPhone 13 Pro Max make me happy. <laughs> Did you know that browsing online using incognito mode doesn't actually protect your privacy? Kevin. Without added security, you might as well just put all your private data in a cute little box, tie a little bow on it, and hand it over to advertisers, hackers, and your ISP. IP Vanish helps you safely browse the internet by encrypting 100% of your data, like passwords, communications, browsing history, and more. Even your physical location is a secret. Use IP Vanish on an unlimited amount of devices without sacrificing any speed. Right now, you get up to 70% off of their yearly plan with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's like getting nine months for free, which is like as long as it takes to make a baby. Go to ipvanish.com FPT and use code FPT to get started today. And of course, huge thanks to IP Vanish for sponsoring this episode of Fupata. Oh, hey, welcome back. So last up for the day, story numero lacto. Let's not talk about iPhone 14 for a change. That, that feels nice. Instead, let's talk about Apple's expensive ass VR headset. For the low, low price of just $2,000, maybe even $3,000, you'll be able to get your sticky hands on Apple's upcoming AR VR headset. How fun! As a reminder and for context, I have to say this every time, Apple's AR VR headset is not the same product as Apple's AR glasses. The AR VR headset will come first and will be more focused on gaming and content consumption and communication. Don't know what that means, but that's what we're being told. And guess what? For the very first time, this has never happened before, at least up to this point, Apple has officially confirmed 
that this thing exists. We've been hearing since like 2017 that the OS that's going to be inside Apple's headset will be called ROS or Reality OS. And just a couple days ago, this was spotted in official Apple source code and in the App Store upload log. It is a direct reference in code to the new OS, Reality OS. See it right there? That is what we like to call an oopsie doopsie. Obviously, we have had way too many reports about this AR VR headset for it not to be a real thing. Obviously, it's real. They're actually working on something like this, but this leak takes it to a whole new level. This is coming straight from Cupertino themselves, not an Apple news blog, nothing like that straight from Apple, and that is a huge deal. Apple rarely lets stuff like this slip, so when something like this happens, it is pretty spicy. Unless letting it slip was not an accident. The headset, by the time it launches, is apparently only going to weigh somewhere in between 100 to 200 grams, which is much lighter than Facebook's Meta Quest or whatever. It's going to be super comfy because of this soft mesh that rests against your face region area and a soft strap that is it basically just looks like a few Apple Watch straps held together with like thoughts and prayers. As for when we're going to officially see this thing like an announcement, well, that was supposed to be this year. In fact, it was supposed to be in just a few months in June at WWDC. But per huge, Apple has hit a few production snags and it's looking more like an official launch next year. We might get some sort of teaser announcement later on this year, but I hope they don't do that. Because uh, the last time we got a teaser announcement for a product that was actually going to come much later, uh, that, that did not go so well. 